The SNP victory last week follows others in 2016 and 2017. So the mandate we have to offer the Scottish people a choice over their future is, by any normal standard of democracy, unarguable. Now let me be clear again today that I do not take the outcome of an independence referendum for granted, nor do I assume that everyone who voted SNP last week necessarily supports independence. I recognise the work we have to do to persuade a clear majority of people in Scotland that independence is the best future for our country. That is why in the months ahead we will update the detailed and substantive case for Scotland becoming an independent nation. And of course, in a referendum, those who believe that Scotland should stay part of the Westminster Union will be able to make that case. So I accept that the case for independence is yet to be won. But the election last week put beyond any reasonable argument our mandate to offer people in Scotland that choice. We built a coalition around this principle and now that the election is over, I believe an even broader coalition is being formed. And the right to choose is not just a demand from me as First Minister or from the SNP. It is based on the solemn right of the people of Scotland to decide our own future. Tory position will not prevail. Democracy will prevail. So today I urge people in Scotland, regardless of our differing views on independence, to rally round the case for Scotland's right to choose, our right to self-determination. This is not the time for Scotland to give up on reasoned and democratic argument. It is the time to pursue it even more confidently. Let's assert our rights as an equal nation and partner. Let's imagine a better country, a Scotland which is at the heart of Europe, a welcoming, outward-looking nation, a country uh, where we get the governments we vote for, a Scotland with full powers to lift children out of poverty, create a fairer country and a more prosperous economy. A better future is possible. And it is our future that is on the line. We have the right to decide what it should be. So just as we did back in the 1990s to break Tory opposition and win a Scottish Parliament, let us now come together under the banner of our right to self-determination and let us put Scotland's future firmly into Scotland's hands. Thank you very much indeed, Anne. Now, happy to answer your questions. Uh, Sarah. Thank you very much. Sarah Smith from the BBC. Um, you've set out your case for why the Prime Minister ought to um, transfer powers. If the Prime Minister refuses to transfer the powers you want, you could be stuck in a constitutional standoff for five years before you could have a referendum. Well, look, Sarah, that's not my intention, and I don't think that is what will happen. I am very firmly um, choosing not to get drawn on what I will do if the Prime Minister acts completely unreasonably. Suffice to say, of course, I've considered all reasonable options and will continue to do so. But I think, uh, I've always thought this, but I think uh, this is even more legitimate uh, in the days after such an emphatic election win for my party. Uh, I think it is uh, reasonable for me uh, to stand on the ground of expecting that election victory and that mandate to be respected. Um, and if I look, uh, as I hope I do, because uh, it's how I feel relaxed about this, it's because I also know that uh, the more a Tory government seeks to block the will of the Scottish people, uh, the more they uh, show complete and utter contempt for Scottish democracy, the more support for independence will rise. So their short-term strategy, uh, in my view, sows the seeds of their longer-term defeat. It is self-defeating, uh, but it will not hold because it is not a democratic position. I think we see the tectonic plates of this shifting already in the days since the election. So I'm going to stand my ground. Um, I fully expect uh, today we'll get the flat no of Tory Westminster opposition, but that's not an end of the matter. And Boris Johnson should not be under any illusion that it is.